Hey everybody, and welcome to episode 2 of the GM Prep Faction Turn uh, Stars Without Numbers stream for our main Stars Without Numbers show, Phantom Horizons. Um, how y'all doing? I'm clanging around in here. Uh, I got Mouse with me. She's been very needy lately, so... We'll see how that goes. I, she was chirping up a storm a minute ago, but then she kind of fell off the chair, and she's less chirpy, so we'll see. And that's been the cat turn. Um, see how far we go from there. Okay, let's see. Oh, I should have done this before. I, I did have it set up before where you couldn't see my... Oh, well, it doesn't matter. My, you can see my toolbar. <laughs> I don't think it's a surprise to anyone. Okay. So. I'm going to just. Sorry, hold on. Whoops. Oh, nope. That was a nightmare. Okay. So, okay. So let me, let me kind of. And now Nico's in here for part two of Cat Update. What, buddy? Okay, so, uh, let's get started. So, I know I said last time I was going to continue the faction turn uh, because I had a bunch more factions, but I think instead I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, the idea of this stream is was, is that it is GM prep and the faction turn. The faction turn took a long time last time, and I want to kind of go into my process a little bit, not that there's much to explain, but I mainly want to hold off on the factions until the players make their next move so I can react to that. Because, and when I kind of go through my recap in a second, I think it'll become clear. Um, or let me do my recap right now. So, uh, in episode one, we were intro to every character. Uh, Lucifer, played by Timothy, who is an ex-spy slash writer, now owns a fancy cape. Pardon me while I open my drink. Uh, Freya, played by Marty, who is sort of a bratty rich girl who's trying to prove herself to, that she's not totally worthless to her mother. She's associated with lots of big business and the Merchants Consortium. Uh, Zephyr, played by Liz, who is a pilot and former... Uh, Mecha Battlestar uh, who owns the ship they're all flying in and Dr. Drake who is played by Timothy uh, played by Timothy, geez, played by Daniel I don't know why I did that uh, played by Daniel and he's a botanist slash medical doctor who's also part swamp man and, and is a scientist and kind of um a scientist and explorer that's the word i was looking for so um that was in the first episode and they were all offered various parts of a job from a mysterious organization to go to the vivero mine project and just insert a flash drive into a computer and let it do its work. It's a fire stick or something. Uh, Freya has the authority to go to the station as, uh, to the mine as uh, members of the Merchants Consortium because the mine is currently on strike. Uh, Zephyr has the ship to get them there. Lucifer has various spy skills and sort of covert ops and counterintelligence. And Dr. Drake uh, is um, to make sure she doesn't just screw it up. He has um, a bit of a rapport with her, a bit of a past history, and uh, is muscle and, worst comes to worst, a medical doctor. Um, so, at the beginning of the second episode, they get to the station, uh, they split up a little bit, um, kind of get a lay of the land. They are on strike, the minor station, but administrators and security personnel are still there, as long as cafeteria staff. 
and um, they reconvene. They plug their hack stick into the computer, and it's going through mostly typical data. A little of it, a little of their research is off book, and then it reveals something. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, sorry. It's as Marty said in chat. It's Herr Doctor, Scientist, Swamp Man, Explorer, Warrior in the proper order. Yeah, Mister goes before Doctor. Um, but they put their fire stick in. It works through the program. It unveils unveils the normal data, the slightly shady data, and then the really shady data where um, it, they're doing live human experiments on people trying to create some sort of super soldier or something. It's inoculate them, use it as a weapon. It's a little unclear what they were trying to do with it other than just, what's it do to people? We know it makes people sick because in the first episode, the doctor had to cure people from gas lung kind of thing. So at the after they they some quick planning on Freya's part, they um, vent the the gas to force the administrators into one section of the station. Uh, Lucifer used his psionic powers to create a force bubble of air and atmosphere around them. They made it back to the Crimson Xanth. Um, Dr. Drake is covering them, and uh, Zephyr makes her piloting check to pull out of the station without quite the proper uh, de-landing uh, departing there we go <laughs> departing protocols um, and they zip out of there headed back to the Ruby Lake house they are confronted by a mysterious ship which seems to be affiliated with their employers the people who handed them the fire stick and said go get this and we'll give you what you want um, and they talked about it briefly, and, uh, Zephyr's plan to book it won, and she entered, uh, a, uh, it's called a rudder, which is, um, or the rudder is the, the planning, like, the route is called a rudder. So, uh, yeah, they entered, um, hyperspace, ostensibly. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's de-landing. It's like de-planing, right? I always thought that was silly. Um, de-space shipping. Uh, so, that was great. I love that Zephyr panicked and was just kind of like, nope, bam, hit a button, go. Um, and, yeah, it's just great. I love it. I love that decision. So, um, at the beginning of the next episode, I am going to have Liz make a check because uh, you're supposed to take half an hour to enter uh, uh, hyperspace. Um, so, okay, so let me explain. So, base difficulty of any jump using a spike drive is seven. There's a little chart in the book that adds pluses and minuses. Uh, normally, because where they are is fairly well trafficked space they've got two options that they would be near enough to that they could enter the uh the meta dimension and uh jump to hyperdrive there so we got dura or alcifi eh. edit or polos <laughs> Um, so, they were essentially here, and they could jump to here or here. So normally, those are well-trafficked routes. I would subtract two from the difficulty of seven. It's below six. You don't even have to make a roll. It's done enough that you can do it. However, because Liz decided to try and make the jump in only one round as opposed to 30 minutes, it adds plus two to it. So there are various other complications, like for instance, uh, if you're trying to use a rudder that's like 
over a year old. You're like, nobody's been to or from here in a while. But it worked at some point. Like, bam. Uh, that adds a bunch to the difficulty and all that jazz. Um... No, Marty, you're you're perfectly good watching. Nothing, none of this is going to be a, too spoilery. I'm going to make sure of that. But yeah, it's supposed to take half an hour to uh, jump in and out of uh, hyperspace. And again, normally it's not that big a deal. And normally, even uh, you might even be able to get enough added uh, bonuses and stuff to not even have to make the check still. Because if it's below six, like I said. Uh, you don't have to make the check. It's just auto. You're just such a... You're a good enough pilot that you can um, just do it. Uh, so, uh, at the beginning of the next episode, I'm going to have Liz make an intelligence pilot check. And she's going to have to get above a certain number. Or else there's another chart where I will roll on the malfunction table. Or maybe I'll have them roll. Uh, and we'll see what happens. But... Uh, and I will determine this randomly probably at the start of the next episode. Or maybe right now. We'll see. But because they're here, they can either go to Dura or Polos, as I said. And let's see what's in Dura. Dura is... There's a planet. Uh, it's a failed colony. Tech level 2. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. So it's a, um, and once again, this is Sectors Without Number. Uh, it's awesome. It randomly generates everything. It randomly generates planets and tags and research bases and all that jazz. You can affect how big and small you want it to be. Um, I think this is just the standard size. I've messed around with it. As you saw, I changed this name because I didn't like it. So for instance, here, let's just, let's just go here. Oops. Can I not do that? Oh, back. Let me see. Oh, I know what I have to do. Edit. And go in here. So let's see. 107. Add system. Oh, no. Edit. Sorry. Add system. Okay, yeah. So this is the new one. So let's see. It generated in 001. So it hasn't generated yet, but let's save it and we'll see what, and I'll probably just delete this in a second. So as you can see, it generated two planets, but you can edit it. Um, if I don't like S Creos, if I can't pronounce it, I usually change it. Nope. Nope. No. Uh, ooh. Let it be. <laughs> I'm keeping this. It's let it be. I might move it <laughs> to somewhere less populated. I don't want that corner of space to be too populated. Maybe we'll move it down here, but it's let it be. Uh, as you can see, I can add an asteroid build, a deep sea station. I can add my own personal note. I think I have something in here that has a note on it. And planet, it's got two planets, nothing else. So the two planets... Are, and these are randomly generated, and I can edit them. I can change uh, the atmosphere if I wanted to. Oops. Human missable. I don't, I think most things I've seen are human missable. I wonder. I wonder if anything isn't. I'll have to look. Tech level zero? What the hell happened? Okay, so they have, for lack of a better term, gone native. They are totally out of contact with other worlds. So after the silence, just, their society just fell to pieces. It's kind of funny. UFO cultist native. <laughs> I swear there are ships in the sky. Now, don't listen to Crazy Jim. He's crazy thinking about these UFOs. There's nobody out there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I the other the only problem is there's a 
uh, well, there's a... See, and here's the problem with doing it randomly. Sometimes you have two things that don't quite go together. So, for instance, uh, out of contact and local speciality. Uh, oh, never mind. No, that still works. You can get weird things that don't quite mesh up. But then kind of trying to make them work in your head, I think, is half the fun of just like, but how does this connect to that? And, for instance, um, Harold, the planet that Ruby Lighthouse is above, was former warriors and a terraform failure. And I just connected those together of maybe it was sabotage, the terraform failure, because they were warriors. So, um, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll show you how to move sectors in a second, Marty. But, uh, uh, so to me, it was like the Mandalorians or the Krogan from Mass Effect. And yeah, the Saurians came in and were just like, we're going to mess up their terraform machines. Uh, so to move things, oops, if you hit edit. Oh, you can definitely move them. Oh, back. Let me go to the edit list. And this is the, you can't click and drag, which is a bit of a bummer. But, let it be. We're going to move to, you can kind of see, it might be a little hard to see on the screen. Um, but there are, there are numbers here. It's gridded. So you can see the numbers. So I'm going to move, let it be from 001. I think I'm going to move it to... Oh, i got to scroll. I can't just type it. I think I'm going to move it to 0600. Save. Yeah, and then I move from there. Oops. What was that? Ooh, I can add navigation routes. Hex tax? Oh, man. So a number of children. I don't know what that means. Navigation routes. Ooh. Oh, boy, I could have fun with that. Create route. Oh, yes. Oh, and I can change the color. You find something new every day with this. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'll mess that around. Um, okay. So, let me, okay, back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do that later. That's gonna be fun. Okay. So, so, out of contact and a local speciality. I think those are really cool together. And it's tech level two, which is roughly analogous. Oh no, it's tech level zero. So that's like caveman tech. I don't remember where tech level two was. Okay. Oh, but it has a space station. What's that? Ooh, that's cool too. Deranged but brilliant scientist. Vault for dangerous pre-tech. So there is this planet that is uh, totally cut off from the rest of the galaxy. The rest of the sector. Um, they have some valuable resource that some lunatic scientist who, you know, maybe he's, maybe it's like a fallout vault situation where they've survived for generations is up in Yat 8 um, with a vault of dangerous, you know, pre-tech, which is all psionic based technology and it's, you know, I like the, it's like magic, essentially. Um, that's pretty rad. Okay, well, downside is the players are way down here. So, unlikely if they'll ever get, I mean, it's very possible they get up here, but they need a better spike drive, because I don't think, I don't know, they can jump to there. There, 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 there. There, there. And you can only move so far with spike drives. 
and they only have a spike drive one. I think you can still move up to three hexes. It just takes a really long time. Um, okay. There was another planet here. Let's see what it was. Tech level four. Okay, so they, they have primitive aliens. And they are post-scarcity. So it's straight up uh, it's straight up Star Trek, and they are following the Prime Directive and not interfering. That's cool. Uh, let's see, anything cool? Oh, awesome! It's got Deep Space Nine in Kamloops too. <laughs> uh, there's there's something so great about random name generating. And Vato Six. Is oh that's kind of rad. Okay, so Cam Loops Two is the uh, Deep Space Nine. It's got you know fun gambling, sorted sorted portrayer purveyors of decadent fun, and corrupt customs agents. Sure, sir, I can let your you know hyper illegal you know light space weapon through for fifteen. <laughs> Credits. And then the other one was Bato 6. Freeze dried corpses, which is just creepy. And a vault of dangerous pre tech. Whew. Maybe it's been undiscovered in that sector. It's like after the scream or something, it, it lost its orbit and is kind of just floating through the sector. Um, okay. So anyway, um, and it was my, that's a brief tour of sectors with that. And clearly I don't know everything about it because I didn't know you could do navigation routes. And what's a create layer? How do you do that? What does it do? I don't even know. Cancel. Um, and then some of this stuff, technically my players cannot see, uh, like all the, Like, Ruby Lighthouse doesn't have this. But I I told them that it's a bunch of weirdos, and there is a black market for the elite. Um, Harold, same thing I told them about. Uh, and that's how I got the... Under Harold, the Vivero Project... Uh, that's how I got workers are in revolt. There's a union strike right now. <laughs> Marty's asking about uh, force canceling ferret lemurs to get those through customs. Uh, that's one case of Romulan ale, my friend, to get yes, 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 through customs. Space customs. Intergalactic customs. So. Uh, so we're going to have the players, which... I don't know what we're... Phantom Horizoners? The Phantoms? The Xanth crew? I don't know what we're going to call them. But, um... Uh... The, so there's that. So they can go here, which has uh, local speciality, which we saw on the other planet. Um, I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think these are random, but, and then. Yeah, I. I just. This is always super creepy to me. The planet is ruled by an intellectual elite chosen via ostensibly natural, natural extermination or tests. Now they got alphas and betas and... Well, I tested into alpha, so you pathetic betas. No, no. Um, it's just so cre... And, like, especially if those people have been genetically... Like Brave New World. 
if those people have been genetically engineered to be better or i was just listening to someone talk about brave new world where they just like give the because they don't they don't give birth it's like factory birth in, in you know giant test tubes but they just give like some of the babies alcohol just to be like no no you're dumb now you're a gamma or whatever like we'll just stunt your growth with booze and it's just like oh it's just just creepy um and you know because they don't have to they can make them they can make them all smart they have the technology they can make him better faster stronger a robocop they can make them all a robocop take away all those pesky emotions or whatever robocop's about um okay Oh, man, incompetent but highly rated graduate. Yeah, no, I knew that guy. <laughs> like, that's great. Um, okay. So there's that. So that'll be a fun planet to go to. And I kind of have... Maybe maybe this one will have a better... Polo, this one will have a better... I had an idea for a planet I wanted them to go to. Um, and we'll see if something... And I am trying to... If I don't like it, I am changing it. But I am mostly trying to... So, yeah. So let me... Sorry, I know this is a little rambly and all over the place. But usually for these kind of... Usually my game mastering style is I look at all the player characters and I create... I try and create hooks and stories for each player character. And then I put them into an overarching campaign... Um, so at home, we played Princes of the Apocalypse, which is, in my opinion, a very underrated adventure. You just gotta do some work as the DM. And we're currently playing through Storm King's Thunder, where we've, uh, we're getting through the giant storyline, and we've woven in parts of other people's storylines. Um, I'm trying to do kind of different stuff with every campaign. We try. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to just be different, while still maintaining certain things through lines through every campaign every campaign will always have player focused stories i like it i think the players like it i i have a lot of fun doing it but for instance in task force unlikely it is the player focused storylines interwoven through a series of smaller still interconnected adventures but it's not necessarily one overarching plot the first 10 episodes or so were very water deep focused and very red wizard and unseen focused and then there was a dungeon of, there was the dungeon of the crypt and then some other stuff and then they went to castle amber and then some other stuff and now they're doing the underdark and they all tie together there's a you can draw a line but it's not the 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 stuff in Waterdeep isn't the reason why they're in the Underdark, if that makes sense. So it's not Storm King's Thunder where the beginning matches the end. It's the beginning. So I'm trying to do something a little different there. Um. And um. For Stars Without Number, because it's a sandbox game like by design by kevin crawford's design that has awesome random generation tables and resources like this that let you do it i'm trying to let the tables decide obviously i still have to fill in a lot of the blanks and connect it and make sure it makes sense and if i straight don't like something i'm going to change it for instance if i don't like Sector names, especially. No, I'm just going to keep randomly generating until I get one I like. Like, Cancuzo 2. That's pretty good. Uh, and I, I... Let's see. Um, I named a bunch of... Yeah, some of these are... I kind of consistently tried to name them Lighthouses. Uh, a lot of times they were named Lowell the lol nine or whatever and i was just like lighthouse but um uh, oops so i'm trying to do that for phantom horizons i'm trying to let the 
the system excel what it is good at and kind of take my hands off of so much of the control of the world. Not that I have, because we play in the Forgotten Realms, so there's a lot already built in. But, um... And then Call of Cthulhu, which we just started, I'm trying to just kind of embrace a different kind of... It, it's a horror game. I'm trying to do that, and I'm going to try and follow adventures pretty much as written. And Spelljammer, I'm just trying to have... I'm trying to just throw... Uh, kind of in, in similar ways to this. I'm trying to make them very different. So in a lot of ways, this is a reflection of Spelljammer and vice versa. Spelljammer is the fun kind of... I don't want to say goofy because it can still be serious, but it is for sure the gonzo version of space travel. It's the, you know, we're flying on the edge of... A disc on the back of five turtle or five elephants on the back of a flying turtle like it's just going to be weird and wacky and fun they they had to make the glyph run in less than 12 foot longs and this is going to be it's always going to be funny like i i know we've talked about this before and i don't think i've ever said it on a stream but look i think i'm a funny person i'm hysterical oh <laughs> obviously i'm joking but i do i i want to have i want to have fun and be funny all the players are very funny like i can't take that away from them um or and i would never try so even the serious streams are gonna be funny i won't spoil what happens in call of cthulhu something weird and goofy happens it's from the adventure but and the adventure says you can play it for laughs or serious and i was like i'm playing this for laughs a hundred percent why would i not um, but it's at the beginning of Curse of Strahd, I think, where Chris Perkins talks about how without light, there is no dark. and Without dark, there is no light. You can't have just one, just the other. If I want the heavy moments to hit, if I want to be called a monster, I have to have the light moments where, you know, Dim Weaver shows up or something, or Uzi, um... Or, you know, the space hamster is just space hamstering around and being a big, <laughs> big tubby boy. Um, or German conquistadors show up. Um, anyway, I'm sure this is all over the place and I hope it makes sense, but kind of the philosophy behind how I'm running things, how I see dis different systems are good at different things, and I try and lean into that. So I'm trying to let the randomness and the tables decide. I'm trying to make this a... And it's supposed to be a straight up a hex crawl. You're supposed to, you know, explore this. I think I've made the galaxy a little too connected to necessarily make it pure exploration like people will kind of know what they're going to get into and i timothy's from way out here freya's from in here somewhere where's dark moon no wait i remember hold on uh, oh here we go yeah great freya's from here the andafala system and the moon of Dark Moon around the planet of Kira. Uh, I don't know if I know where Liz is from. And if I do, I, I don't. I, for whatever reason, I just remember I put Timothy way up here because I told him he escaped to the furthest part of the galaxy. And I, I think Daniel's from around here. I can't remember off the top of my head, Dr. Drake. Or this is where his accident was. But everybody's kind of from all over. Um, uh, so, yeah. Okay, let me focus up. Uh, this is what it's like to have a conversation with me in real life. It's just all over the place. 
if I had a podcast, it would call, be called a series of digressions. Um, okay, so let's see what Polos is about. We got an asteroid belt, four. I don't know what that means. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. You have to look up what the asteroid... I'm sure there are rules for asteroid belts. I'm sure that's like severity or something. But, okay, so in the asteroid belt, there are ancient aut automated guardian drones and a gold rush for new materials. So, oh boy, it's just... It's, you know, prospectors in their, you know, ratty old ships trying to outrun and outgun ancient robots who are... <laughs> Who are trying to defend their home. Which maybe, maybe this used to be a planet that got blown up or something. And that's why it's kind of various different resources. And there's all these drones. Maybe there's something hidden in there. Which is why, maybe it was a defense system for one of the planets. Why would there, why else would there be drones? Asteroid base. Okay, this, this. Ooh. This works out well. Independent asteroid prospectors. There's the gold rush. Base needs a new asteroid. What is it? Do they can they move the base? Have the have the drones figured out where they are? And is it like an immediate thing, or is it like a? Well, we've drilled the hell out of this this asteroid, and it's no longer structurally sound, so we have to move, but. Can they? Do they just have to like pack up everything and just build a base somewhere else? That's interesting. <laughs> oh, Marty! Yeah, Marty corrected me. My podcast would be called First of All No. Um. Okay. Oops. I'm trying to get rid of all my highlights. Space Station Bula Eight. I am changing the name of that. Oops. G Gary Fox. <laughs> Odd. Mitchell Nine is somewhere in here. Gary Fa. Uh, freeze dried ancient corpses. Supply base for pirates. Oh man. There are only so many of these, which I'm sure I could uh, just one. I can make it unoccupied. I don't know if I can add my own. Can I just type. Oh, I could. So if I wanted to, I could add my own if I find maybe another list online, because the the resources for this game are incredible. Let me hold on, let me let me pull open. Like it's crazy. First of all, everything that worked for the old game works for revised edition. Uh, there are some rules in the back of the book for converting, but I, I don't think you need to do much converting. Uh, official publications. Here's all the books that Kevin Crawford uh, wrote. Um, a lot of it is free, as you can see. Uh, and then he even just released something on Drive Through RPG the other day that I saw that looked interesting. Everything he does looks interesting. Uh, character sheets, which I've pulled from. This is where I got uh, the spaceship sheet we're using. Um, and then this is all the community stuff. And a lot of it is just stuff from Reddit and all that other stuff. Uh, and it's just... it's This community just seems real great. And let's see. Community made. Here's the communities. Uh... Their current Reddit, Google Plus, which I thought Google Plus was going away, but it feels like it's never quite gone away. Like, I thought it was supposed to just be dead. Like, I keep hearing that, but I keep seeing people also occasionally post on it. Uh, Discord, oh, I might have to Discord. Join the Discord or in the Facebook group. Here's non uh, stars without number that is just good for sci-fi games generating a full ships company that's awesome 
thousand and one random space encounters. Click on that in a second. And then non. Okay, I don't know what that is. Oh, there was visual publications. There is one of these books, Polychrome. Polychrome is a world book that I believe introduces like cyberpunk rules. I've always wanted to play like a cyberpunk game, uh, much like I've always wanted to play a sci-fi game. And since we've mostly learned and are still learning the rules for Stars Without Number, and it's a very good generic sci-fi game, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that in a... It's good for whatever kind of sci-fi game you want to play. If you want to play Space Fantasy, you could play Space Fantasy with Stars Without Number. If you want to play hardcore science fiction, you know, just pull out all the psionics and you could play Red Mars in Stars Without Number. Um, and because cyberpunk kind of aligns so well with sci-fi most of the time, I thought this would be a good system for it, and I keep meaning to check out um, that that book for it. Um, but then again, there might be a new edition of cyberpunk coming out since the video game is... Um, I'm getting a phone call from nobody. Um, since the video game is about to come out, and um that looks fun it looks fun the game um seth skorkowski who i like on youtube he loves it it's one of his favorite games um and he just started playing traveler on with his group which will be great for him to review all the traveler adventures so i can see if i can use any of them here um uh okay I can't even remember what my point was. This game's great. I had a lot of fun with it. Gary Five. Okay. So both of these are supply bases for pirates. There's a story there. This is a pirate war. And one of them... <laughs> and they both have to live on creepy space stations. It's like, okay, well... We can either live with all the corpses that it were, you know frozen in stasis something went wrong and they're just icicles or we can live with a guy who thinks his name is Zunal 7 and that he is the space station and we have to call him friend computer he's real smart though designed us good weapons he's just a little you know crazy okay so that's that that's, and that's all just in the asteroid belt, which if they jump into it, I'm sure I will make them jump into. Paris 4. Oh, very cool. Uh, sorted purveyors of fun. Always great. Deep space alien signal. And it's kind of the edge of the sector. So is it something from before the scream? Is it something from outside the sector? Is it the cause of the scream? Lots of cool stuff. Just saying. This is why this is why random tables are great. Because it gives you a sentence that you can take so many different ways. Um like there aren't that many things here. But each one of them can have so many different interpretations and implementations. Okay. Back. That's the refueling station. Ingaga Ingagun. <sighs> Papadus. Third. Eh. Oh, I like... I don't have enough two-name planets. Bari, Baru, Barozo Gori. What about Gori Barozo? Oops. Uh, 
or Beras. Gory Beras. Oh, I kind of like that. Okay. Temperate. Immissible. Well, that mean they can't breathe it? Oh, breathe in my Okay. Biosphere. Immissible. Maybe I don't know what missable means. Immissible. Well, that's not helpful. Okay. <laughs> Um, cancel. Uh, tech level two, which is roughly like like Imperial Age Britain. It's not even like modern technology. That's more like tech level three. Um. Ooh, and the government is lying that aliens exist. Awesome. No, no. No, no. Nothing out in the stars. No, certainly no pirates. Or crazy guys named Zero Seven or whatever I said that guy's name was. Uh, eugenics cult. Uh, this is SETI Alpha 5. Um... Ooh. Okay, so this planet uh, is roughly colonial or, you know, imperial age Britain. The government knows aliens and space travel are real. They keep it from the populace. However, there is a cult dedicated to improving the human genome, probably through alien technology, since they wouldn't have it their own themselves. Um, so you got like a Mr. Sinister type thing. And oh, yeah, no, this works out. The altered cultists look human because the locals are terrified of anything unusual. Uh, the genetic modifications and drawbacks are contagious. What does that mean? How would that work? And then, of course, there have to be sympathizers in the government. Awesome. Ooh, eugenic breeding pit. Oh, gross. Just the phrase breeding pit. They're people. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> and ma! XX! Um, temperature burning. Awesome. No native bio. What the hell is this planet? It's Mad Max. Okay, so they got a Cold War. Um, and that's pretty much enemies. Femme fatale. Awesome. Just yeah, one Russian. You got Black Widow. Um. Oh man, he's a bastard, but he's our bastard. Is pretty great. Yeah, no, Cold War in space is, it's a, it's a, I like it. It's a good pitch because it's, you, you arguably have so much more to worry about and you are just being petty because you can't get along with your neighbor. I like, Cold Wars are fascinating anyway, but, um. Um, and. Then sealed menace. Something on the planet has the potential to create enormous havoc for the inhabitants if it is not safely contained by its keepers. Hmm. That could be interesting, too. I don't know what it would be. Uh, terraforming technology that would play into some stuff in the NEMA sector. A disease that has to be quarantined that would play into maybe the eugenics cult a little bit. An ancient alien relic that requires regular upkeep in order to prevent planetary catastrophe. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh man, and misguided fool who thinks he can use it. Always good. Always good. The natives don't all believe in the menace. It would definitely be something I would... No, no. It's fine. There's no such thing as nukes. Um, okay. Now, none of these are quite what I wanted from... Uh, they're all great. But I, the thing I had in mind was just some, not quite backwater, but like super local planet. Like it's, you go there and their capital city is really tiny and like not very impressive. It's got like one runway and like a cut, like a building that's maybe like five stories tall and that's kind of it. And then, you know, other low lying buildings and everybody knows each other and it's just, oh, you need to get out of space, huh? Well, okay, well, you got to talk to my brother's neighbor's uncle. He's got all the fuel you need. And just kind of almost, yeah, like just members of the community. And not necessarily make it creepy, but I just, I did kind of want, what's a planet like with a small town feel? Uh, which isn't to say this couldn't be it, but... Or this Guri, Guri Baza, Bar, I gotta change that. I can't say that. Guri. Oh, that's, that's, that doesn't sound good either. Let's... Galatea. Well, that's something. I don't think it should be called it. Uh, stop giving me Inga good. Frid. 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 Frid's good enough. Um. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Um. The sealed menace. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So that's what's around. That's where they can jump to. And they're either going here or here. If all goes well. If all doesn't go well, they could be over here. And there's nothing. And then you have to go to Skidda 5. I'm changing that to Skidda. <laughs> With this half grade sure of a caretaker. And it's just... Ship in severe distress. <gasps> awesome. Um, okay. And I tried to kind of create... I Because I moved, I moved a lot of this stuff around. It was originally, I think, a little more spread out. But I wanted to kind of create little clusters that create sort of like galactic centers of power so this is the quote-unquote the core and this is essentially it's not the outer rim because like all of this would be the outer rim but it's sort of the 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 southlands power for lack of a better term this little like j-shaped thing and then kind of tried to make i checked on a couple of these and tried to make them a little more provincial from kind of what i was talking about before so, I know that was a little rambly, and I don't know if I kind of covered everything, but, but that's just kind of where my head's at right now uh, for what they're going to do next. It's going to be random. It's all going to depend on uh, how good the roll is. Let me see if I can quick pull up. The chart is we'll have to roll on. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to... I, I'm trying to... Galatea, one, I know that was the name they gave Power Girl in Justice League Unlimited. 
She was a clone of Supergirl. But she, yeah, she's she is a. Is she the statue who came to life, Marty, in chat. <laughs> you know more about this than I do. Let's see. Stars without number. My rule book. My PDF. Um. Okay, that is the one. It is the statue who came to life. Okay. Um, let's see. So certainly a cool and interesting name, and and um, if I were to, I, I'd love to. I'm having so much fun just thinking up sci-fi ideas because I love science fiction, and I've played fantasy role-playing games for a long time. I played Dungeons and Dragons for well, not that long, but uh, for fifth edition since a little after its launch and I started with fourth edition so I guess 10 years about probably um maybe a little less than that but pretty much during that time only played Dungeons and Dragons consistently with a couple outspurts other places so it's very refreshing and fun to um to get to kind of expand into other things I'm interested in um like science fiction so my point being if um if i were to create another sector it would be fun to do sort of all mythological names much like how our solar system is all named after you know greek or roman gods for the most part um it'd be fun to kind of take lesser known uh icons and expand that so it's you know and the people who are here probably because that is ancient ancient history to them they've probably lost you know the 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 the, the um the origin of these names so they don't know why their planet is named gorgon or galatea or artemis but something that you can kind of plan on that planet ties into that and I think that would be fun. Okay. Pull up my PDF. Starships, space travel. Uh, spike drills are what it is called to enter the meta flow kind of thing. Um, so base difficulty for a spike drill, as I said, was seven. The course is totally uncharted, plus six. That's like near so that means you essentially even if you are a solid pilot you probably have to roll two twelve or two sixes uh the rudder is more than five years old is plus two because meta the meta flow can change slowly over time and it seems like objects in space have actual navigational impact so if for instance stars or asteroids or something changes if the star becomes a red giant over time that will affect travel uh, it's plus two the rudder is one to five years old is plus one the rudder is less than a year old plus zero the rudder is less than a month old minus two so that's that was the one i was applying because this this little l check mark thing we've made uh is a well-traveled part of space so minus two i think that's fair um if you're trying to drill a bunch at once, it's plus one for every two hexes. So if you're trying to go from here to here, it would be plus one. Because it's per two full hexes, and that's one and a, or two and a half. Or three, sorry. Um, trimming the course, which I thought about applying... But then I thought that might be a little too mean. Uh, which, if you're trying to make a... You're trying to cut the time of the drill. So you're starting in the wrong spot, or you're like, eh, we can fudge it, we can make it in six hours instead of ten. And the drill activation was rushed, which I am applying, because it was. Um... Um, uh, oh, and then I'll, I'll talk about complications. But something that is interesting, it, the, the course is totally uncharted, plus six. 
if you can find a new course, if you can find, for instance, a, let's say there's no known rudder between Giota and Ankos. Uh, to get there, you kind of have to like go way out of your way or way down here. If you try and do it, and you can successfully do it, and then sell that information to people, it's worth a crap ton of credits. There's Mousy. Um, so, uh, sorry. Um, so, uh, if, if Liz fails the roll, she will roll 3d6 and there's a little mishap. You can't see. I don't know why. I'm, I don't have the physical book. Um, uh, the higher you get, the better. For instance, if you get an 18, you, you did it. You just did it. By blind luck, it happened. Uh, maybe you maybe you even discovered a new course. And if you can download your ship's computers into some navigational charts, uh, it just worked. Um, uh, 16 to 17, you did it, but it takes a lot longer. 13 to 16, you f you're off course, but you figured it out. So you get to make another check. Um, ow, what the? Are you okay? Are you okay? Sorry. The cat's freaking out. What? Um, uh, 9 to 12, the ship is off course. You spend all your time traveling, and then you have to make a roll again. Uh, a power spike one system is disabled until repaired uh, ship stuck in transit for full base time before being able to make another pilot check if the spike drive fails treat as if a th as if it were a three rolled and that's real bad um, I'm not sure if there's a way to randomly determine what system failed I'd probably roll a die uh, four to five, sheer surge overwhelms internal systems. Ship emerges uh, around a star nearest to drill origin. Ooh, so you'd get thrown back into the star in Nema. 50% um, chance for each system to be disabled until repaired. Ooh, yeah. Uh, and then... If the spike drive is disabled, roll it's a three. So if you roll a three, uh oh. If you roll a three. Catastrophic dimensional energy incursion. Ship emerges around a star within one D six hexes of the target destination with a drive on all systems destroyed. So you might end up six. So, of the destination. So, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can end up out here. Potentially. It's one. You might end up here, where there's nothing. And almost certainly, you guys are dead. Like, and I, certainly, I would not want it to end that way. I would work with the players to figure something out but no if you if you fail both those roles you're just kind of bound but if you I mean if you if you end up in a planet you can start hailing someone and try and get some help call space triple a um so uh we'll see how well they do we'll see where they end up because hell i guess if they if they do roll a three they won't end up here or here. They can end up here. In Pierope. Um, so, we'll see. But that's kind of just where what I've been thinking of, where my head's at. 
I opened this 1001 random space encounters. Oh, it's awesome. Um, okay. So yeah. I think that's where I'll leave it for now. Uh, and we'll see where the folks of Phantom Horizon end up at the beginning of the next episode. I'm very excited. If you haven't watched our first two episodes and our two pre-episodes before that, we've had a total of four episodes, essentially. Um, I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, it's a new system for all of us. I'm still learning it. Um, it's an interesting and fun system. The characters that everyone has created are really cool and diverse and interesting. Uh, and they've created a good crew, which I think is important and cool. And uh, not even necessarily on purpose, because it was all determined, a lot of it randomly, because of how the dice played out. It's just everyone kind of meshed together really well, and that's always very satisfying as both a game master and a viewer of the show. Um, but yeah. So the next episode is called Away From Here because Zephyr just wanted to get GTFO, as they say in the ancient earth tongues of Twitter and text messaging. Um, and then sad emoji, crying face. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, I hope that wasn't too rambly. I hope a lot of that made sense. Uh, I will probably do this, something like this, once every other month. Uh, to kind of fill in the, when I don't have enough stuff for a faction turn, because I don't want the factions to move much faster than the players, which is one of the reasons why I'm holding off. Um... But also, once the players start to... Oh, I don't think I ever talked about that. This is the reason why I'm not doing a proper faction turn. is because I want to see where the players go. I want to see what they do next. Because kind of them bolting is, I think, going to be the catalyst of a lot of interesting things. It's the Axiom Corporation is not going to be happy with them. Their benefactors on the Ruby Lighthouse aren't going to be happy with them. Maybe where they ever they end up isn't going to be happy with them. They still have enemies from pr their previous before stream life. Um, so who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what, who's going to show up? Who knows about anything? Um, but yeah. So, uh, like I said, I'll probably do this once every other month, alternating between proper faction turns and this sort of GM prep slash me random rambling about my method and my madness and all that jazz. But um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Andy Hatton. Uh, we have lots of awesome tabletop role-playing game content on this channel and on Twitch, uh, which is this channel, and on YouTube, youtube.com slash God of Roads, twitch.tv slash Laughing Dragon Inn. Uh, we stream Mondays and Wednesdays. Next Monday is Call of Cthulhu, which I have previously kind of alluded to some of the stuff that happens. Um, it's our first episode of our Down Darker Trail stream, Twilight Trails, uh, and three awesome characters in that. Watch watch us build them in our episode zero. That stream is a lot of fun, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, and then on this Wednesday, I skipped this Wednesday, is Star Chasers. We'll be down... Marley will be down uh, CC, but um, the players, I worked out exactly what they're going to be doing today, and um, it's stupid, which means it's one of my favorite ideas. So uh, that episode's called Broken Sphere, uh, and uh, I'm just going to plug everything we're doing. Uh, next week on Wednesday is... Task Force Unlikely, with uh, possibly my favorite name I've ever come up with for an episode, uh, which is Lava Boat to Drow Town. Um, just forget it, Dritz. It's Drow Town. And yeah, the last Monday of the month is supposed to be not Barovia. Um, 
my wife is coming home after a long time away and i don't know if i'll have full time to write that depending on how busy we get uh catching up and uh kind of putting my putting the house back in order and putting our lives back together so we'll see i'll do something that day it might just not be a full not barovia or i'll do a shorter one um and not do what i was originally originally planning other than that uh first of the month will be phantom horizons again uh where we'll see what happens here um check out all our i'm biased but check out all of our content i think it's really great i i genuinely do i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't put so much time and effort into it if i didn't think it was super awesome so have a great night everybody and yeah just have a great night